Hi everyone and welcome back to another session in our right way living in a wrong way world. Now in front of me you can see that I've got two glasses. Now what's different about these two glasses? They're both made of glass. I can see you through both of them. But what's different about them? Have a good look. What can you see? They're different sizes, aren't they? We've got one big glass and one small glass. If we stand them next to each other, we've got one tall glass and one short glass. They're opposite sizes. What happens now? Let's see if we fill one up. There we go. Now what have we got? One full glass and one empty glass. And if we fill them both up, then what happens? There we go. Two full glasses, but they both feel different. One's full of paper and it's very light other one is full of stones and it's heavy, light and heavy. Opposite things about our two glasses, big and small, tall and short, light and heavy. Hmm, now we've been thinking about that, haven't we? About living in a bit like opposite land because Jesus asks us often to do and live in the opposite way to the way that we want to. We looked at that in the Beatitudes and we're carrying on looking at that in our stories in the Sermon on the Mount. And today we're going to look at another story in the Bible about Joseph and see how he reacted perhaps in an opposite way to the way we would have wanted to but in God's way. Let's see what he did. God's story, Joseph. So part of God's story is about a guy named Joseph, and it begins like this. Once there was a guy named Joseph who had 10 older brothers and one younger one. When Joe was a boy, he was his dad's favorite. In fact, his dad liked him so much better than his brothers that he gave Joe a special gift to prove it. You can imagine this made his brothers jealous. And Joe only made things worse. He told his brothers about dreams he had where he was ruling over them. Well, this made Joe's brothers furious. One day they were working and saw Joe coming. They said, here comes that dreamer. They threw Joe into a dark pit. They might have left him there forever, but they met some men traveling from Egypt and sold Joe to them as a servant instead. They thought that was slightly nicer than leaving him in a pit. Then they went home and told their father Joe had been killed by a wild animal. This broke their dad's heart. Kids, these brothers were really bad news. Selling a sibling is never a good idea. Ever. But the Bible says the Lord was with Joe. When Joe was a servant, he worked for a really important rich guy named Potiphar. And Potiphar liked Joe so much, he put him in charge of the whole house. Joe was happy until one day he was blamed for something he didn't do. And Potiphar sent him straight to jail. Well. God was still with Joe, even in prison. The guard decided he liked Joe so much, he put him in charge of all the other prisoners. Then God gave Joe special knowledge about dreams. When two prisoners had dreams, Joe knew what they meant, so he told them. Two years later, Egypt's ruler called Pharaoh had a dream, and nobody knew what it meant. But by now, one of the two prisoners Joe had helped was out of jail and working for Pharaoh. He told Pharaoh about Joe and God helped Joe figure out what Pharaoh's dream meant. But Pharaoh's dream was really more of a nightmare. It meant that everybody in Egypt would have food for seven years and be hungry for seven years. Joe told Pharaoh the only way to survive was to store food during the seven good years. Well, Pharaoh thought Joe's idea was brilliant. He put him in charge. During the seven hungry years, nobody could eat without getting food from Joe. He was like a human vending machine. Well, remember how Joe had 11 brothers? Like everybody else, they had to get food from Joe. And when they came, they didn't even recognize their brother. But Joe knew who they were. He secretly tested them to see if they changed. After all, they did throw him in a pit and sell him. Finally, he couldn't hide who he was from his brothers anymore. 
He told everyone to leave the room because he was about to cry. After sobbing for a few minutes, he told them, I'm your brother, Joseph. I'm the one you sold. The brothers couldn't believe it. They had hurt Joe, but God had taken care of him during the good times and the bad. Even with everything they had done to Joe, he forgave them because he was willing to follow God, even when it was hard. Joe told them, you plan to harm me, but God planned it for good. And God used Joe to save many lives, including the family that was part of God's special rescue plan. And that's the story of Joseph. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Joe was his dad's favorite. His brother sold him. Potiphar put Joe in charge. Joe was sent to jail. The guard put Joe in charge. Pharaoh had a bad dream. Joe told him what it meant. Pharaoh put Joe in charge. Joe's brothers had to come to him for food. Joe forgave them. This was part of God's rescue plan. And that's a part of God's story. Hello! How lovely to see you! And you join me at a very exciting time. You see, I'm in a bit of a tizzy because I have been asked to perform the elephant's toothpaste experiment this morning. Now this is an experiment I have never ever ever tried before so I'm very excited and I'm pleased to have you along. Now what do I need for this experiment? I hear you say well I shall tell you. I need hydrogen peroxide, washing up liquid, dried yeast, warm water, a variety of measuring implements, two pieces of scientific equipment, some rubber gloves and some protective goggles just in case. So let's put the goggles and the gloves on and let's get started. So here we go. The first thing I must do is to measure half a cup of the hydrogen peroxide. So let's go. There we are. And once that is measured, I shall pour that through the scientific equipment into the receptacle at the bottom. There we are. And carefully does it. In it goes. Lovely. Okay, next I need a tablespoon full of washing up liquid. Now that too will pour into the receptacle. All in, lovely. Now on this side, I must add three tablespoons of the warm water to the dried yeast. When I've done that, I will need to give it a jolly good stir because I must dissolve all of the yeast and make sure it's all a smooth paste. Now that can take a short while with me. Here we go. Okay, so I will pour this in, make sure it's all mixed up, stand back and see what happens. Here we go. Well, I don't know about you, but I can see something beginning to start already. So let's see what happens when I mix it up.
looks like giant toothpaste for an elephant. Now, I'm not sure that an elephant should choose to use this for cleaning their teeth, but I think you'll find that's quite a result. Thanks, Professor. That was a great experiment. Do you know, I think she's right that those aren't really the right ingredients for anyone to put into toothpaste. But I did enjoy watching how the hydrogen peroxide reacted to the yeast and it bubbled over. But that made me think. It made me think about what we can be like sometimes when maybe someone's hurt or upset us. And it's like we bubble over and we want to get our own revenge and to, to retaliate. You see, love isn't always easy to do, but it's always the right thing to do. There will be times in our lives where people do hurt us, upset us or disappoint us. But Jesus teaches that we should continue to live like he does, which means we should continue to show love even when that love doesn't seem to be being returned. Sometimes in our hearts and our minds, we can feel like we're justified in being angry and wanting revenge and wanting to retaliate. But Jesus teaches us that we should be different. A child of God lives opposite to the normal. So instead of being um, wanting to get revenge or to retaliate, we should show forgiveness. So this week, if someone upsets you, can you try and be the kind of person who doesn't bubble over, who doesn't try to get revenge or retaliate, but actually takes a deep breath and shows love and forgiveness instead? Hello kids. Today we are going to be making paper plate or paper bowl jellyfish. <laughs> For this craft you could use a paper plate or a bowl for the jellyfish's head and then for the tentacles you could use painted bubble wrap you could use strips of tissue paper or wool or ribbon or whatever you think would work well it would also be handy to have a glue stick scissors and tape and of course something for the eyes for my jellyfish i have chosen to use a paper plate which i have cut in half and painted green now this one is painted solidly but this one has been has had the brush flat brush dragged over the surface to keep this pattern you could of course use the back of the plate now for the bubble wrap i have simply got a nice wide flat brush and then dragged the paint across the surface like this so it doesn't fill it in solidly Once the paint is dry on the bubble wrap, you then have to cut a strip until you end up with lots of strips like this if you are using bubble wrap. The next stage is to turn the plate over, line up the bubble wrap strips. Then take your tape and it need, you need to surprise the jellyfish by sticking it down quickly. If you don't stick it down quickly, all the bubble wrap strips will come into the air and stick on the tape where you probably don't want them to be. So there we are, that's the tentacles done. And then it is a matter of sticking your googly eyes in place. And that is the finished jellyfish. So I have chosen to decorate my jellyfish with sparkly shapes, but you can, of course, use whatever you choose to make your jellyfish look beautiful. Now, kids, remember, just as Joseph in the story chose to forgive his brothers instead of getting back at them, use your jellyfish to help you to remember not to shake with anger, but to forgive instead.
shakes and things break, break. You are my rock, my everything. As my world shakes, shakes and things.